On the evening of September 6, 2017, WePhone users saw a message pop up on the application that read, The owner of the company was killed by his poisonous wife, Jai Xinxin. WePhone is shutting down, along with an ID number and phone number in parentheses. The next day, news outlets reported that WePhone's founder had died by suicide in Beijing. Welcome to Red Eastern True Crime. If you enjoyed this story, please subscribe to my channel. Let's dive into this story. Su Xiangmao, born in 1980 in a rural area of Fujian Province, China, is the youngest of five children. His family faced financial hardships, and his parents and siblings worked hard to pay his fees since high school. Despite the challenges, Su excelled academically and earned a place at university to study computer science. After receiving his bachelor's degree, Su went on to obtain a master's degree from Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunications. He then worked as a programmer at Baidu for three years. Su really loved his job, and he was very talented in the field. In 2012, Su founded his own technology company in Beijing and launched a communication application called WeFone. The success of WeFone brought Su substantial profits. He bought an apartment in Beijing and another house for his parents in their hometown. He also provided about $30,000 a year for his parents' retirement. Su was generous to his siblings, promising to help his nieces and nephews with their future education expenses. After his career became stable, he also wanted to have a family of his own. With a height of 160 cm and an average appearance, Su had an introverted personality and limited romantic experiences. Although he had been introduced to several girls by his family and had met potential matches on dating sites, he hadn't found the perfect girl. Su had specific preferences. He wanted someone who was gentle, attractive, and family-oriented. It would be even better if she had a household registration in Beijing so that their future children would have the qualification to pursue education in Beijing. To find the right person quickly, Su spent a lot of money to become a premium member of this dating site. The dating company, like a matchmaking service, screened candidates based on the client's preferences. They provided reports on potential matches and arranged meetings. On March 30, 2017, as arranged by the matchmaker, Su met Jai Xinxin at the dating company's office. Jai Xinxin, or Cindy, as we'll call her, was born in November 1986 in Tai'an City, Shandong Province, China. Her father is a university teacher at Shandong University of Science and Technology, and her mother works as an accountant at the same university. Cindy received her bachelor's degree in civil engineering from the same university, and later got her master's degree from Beijing, Jiao Tong University. According to the dating company's report, Cindy is 107 cm tall, unmarried, studied at the University of California, Los Angeles for one year, and works as a civil servant with a monthly income of over $3,000. She has a household registration in Beijing. The matchmaker's assessment of Cindy is that despite her privileged background, she is highly motivated, lacks the negative habits associated with wealthy individuals, never goes to nightclubs, can use the same handbag for two years, loves family life, and is considered a suitable candidate for a wife. Sue had a good first impression of her. They didn't talk much but exchanged contact information. Unexpectedly, Cindy took the initiative to ask Sue out for dinner and a movie the next day. Cindy told Sue that she had only been in a relationship once during her college years. She also mentioned that it was very fateful that their lunar birthdays fell on the same day. Later that night, Cindy texted Sue and expressed, I don't know why, but I really like you, love at first sight. I'm willing to have a baby with you. Sue replied excitedly and immediately fell in love. The next day, Cindy sent Sue a video of some birds flying over a villa and shared the villa's information. This surprised Sue and made him feel a bit pressured. In response, he sent Cindy screenshots of his stock and financial accounts to show his financial capability and express that he could also afford a villa. On April 13, 2017, 
Sue, who was deeply in love, bought Cindy a Tesla worth about $140,000. Cindy quickly posted about it on social media, without mentioning Sue. On April 30th, 2017, Sue brought Cindy back to Fujian to meet his family. Cindy appeared sweet, even taking the initiative to help with household chores and walking hand in hand with Sue's mother. Sue's family liked her very much and hoped they would get married. A week later, after leaving Fujian, they took a trip to Sanya city of Hainan at Cindy's suggestion. Over the next few days, however, Cindy had Sue spend about $470,000 to buy a seaside apartment. The entire process of buying the apartment was managed by Cindy, and she even added her name to the contract. Sue felt a little uncomfortable, but was afraid that refusing would hurt their relationship. At that point, they had only known each other for 40 days. They then traveled to Hong Kong and Macau. Sue bought Louis Vuitton and Fendi bags, Dior shoes, and a $50,000 Cartier diamond ring, necklace, and earrings for Cindy. By this time, after only 50 days of knowing each other, Sue had already spent 5 million RMB, or about $750,000, on Cindy. Sue also took Cindy to meet his friends and showed her around the company. However, he never met Cindy's parents or any of her friends, and he didn't visit her workplace. Sue discovered that the lunar birthday they supposedly shared was false. He also learned that Cindy had two WeChat accounts. Sue realized that he didn't know enough about Cindy, but his heart was still deeply involved. On May 31st, Cindy suggested that they get their marriage certificate on June 2nd. The next morning, Cindy said, I had a dream. It seems like I got married before, but I got divorced on the same day. Sue asked, you didn't actually get married before, did you? Cindy said, now that I think about it, it seems like I did. I once arranged a fake marriage to help a friend named Li Tiejun qualify to buy a house in Beijing. Sue suggested calling Li Tiejun to confirm, but Cindy replied, it ended unpleasantly and I don't want to contact him. Sue said this matter was too sudden and he needed time to think. Surprisingly, Cindy was the first to get upset, pack her things, and move back home. After a night of thinking, Sue realized that he didn't want to lose Cindy. The next evening, Sue apologized, and they agreed to get their marriage certificate on June 6th. But things changed again. Because Cindy was divorced, she had to go to the local police station with the court-issued divorce mediation agreement to change her marital status from unmarried to divorced before she could reapply for her marriage certificate. On the evening of June 5th, Sue expressed a desire to see Cindy's divorce mediation agreement. Cindy, claiming personal privacy, refused to show it unless Sue paid her 880,000 RMB, about $130,000. In a confused state, Sue handed over the money. After reading the document, Sue's feelings became even more complicated. The man's name was not Li Tiejun, but someone with the surname Liu. They got married in January 2011 and divorced in April of that year. Their marriage lasted three months, and Liu compensated Cindy with $30,000. Sue pointed out a significant discrepancy in what Cindy had previously told him, which made him feel uneasy. He told Cindy that they couldn't rush to get the marriage certificate. This angered Cindy, who replied that she had changed her marital status to divorce for him, and now he was telling her to think about their relationship. She then punched Sue in the eye, and they parted on bad terms. That night, Sue apologized to Cindy again, expressing his guilt and how much he missed her. He asked if Cindy's declaration of love at first sight was genuine, to which Cindy responded harshly, telling him to shut up and think about his actions. Sue, aware that he was a carrier of the hepatitis B virus, apologized repeatedly. He even went to Cindy's neighborhood to apologize in person, but she refused to meet. Cindy insisted that if Sue sincerely wanted to reconcile, he should give her 50,000 RMB, about $7,500 every day, until she was satisfied. In addition, 
Cindy demanded compensation of 358,000 RMB, about $53,000 for the change in marital status. Sue agreed to these terms. In total, Sue paid Cindy approximately $200,000 to obtain the marriage certificate. The two officially registered their marriage on June 7th. Sue thought he finally had a family of his own, but little did he know that his life was about to take a dark turn. After they got married, Cindy refused to move into Sue's apartment, claiming she had a fear of heights. So Sue had to live in Cindy's villa. On June 17th, Cindy's father arrived in Beijing and Sue met his father-in-law for the first time. That afternoon, Sue received a message from a former blind date, congratulating him on his recent marriage. Sue replied politely. When Cindy saw this, she accused Sue of having an inappropriate relationship with the other woman, called him a scumbag, and demanded a divorce. This happened just 10 days after their marriage. Sue apologized repeatedly and expressed how much he missed Cindy when they were apart. He compared it to being under a spell and hoped that Cindy could forgive him. Sue even sent Cindy 50,000 RMB and promised to send another 200,000 RMB the next day. Cindy replied, one million tomorrow, about $150,000. On June 18th, at Cindy's request, Sue wrote a guarantee letter stating that if he initiated a divorce in the future, he would compensate Cindy with 5 million RMB, about $750,000, and pay off the mortgage on the Hainan house for Cindy. With the guarantee letter in hand, Cindy threatened to divorce Sue over petty issues, citing Sue's unpredictable and cold personality. On June 22, Sue moved back into his own apartment, and Cindy, claiming a fear of heights, insisted that Sue sell the high-rise apartment and buy a villa. Cindy often mentioned her relatives in Beijing who lived in large houses, claiming that a woman should manage the family's finances. These events gradually made Sue aware of Cindy's materialistic nature and cunning. He felt increasingly oppressed and fell out of love with Cindy. However, the cost of a divorce was too high, given the substantial investment he had already made. Cindy, aware of Sue's suspicions, explained in a long message, before marrying Sue, he had personal assets of 20 million RMB, about $3 million. The villa is in her name and her father is accomplished. The men introduced by the dating company had better qualifications than Sue. She repeatedly criticized Sue, claiming he lacked gratitude, was unattractive, had a bad personality and unclear speech, and even said he had a contagious disease. Cindy also complained about his small apartment, claiming that men in their 40s with annual incomes of several million dollars were common in Beijing and that she could easily find a better match. Those words severely hurt Sue's feelings. On July 6th, Cindy sent Sue a photo of a villa for sale, again using her fear of heights as a reason to request a house change. She expressed, I've made my opinion very clear. The apartment is too small and too high. If you're not willing to change, the only thing I can do is get a divorce and find another man. Sue felt exhausted by the relationship. He replied, this is really hard, going through all this trouble just for a house. Fine, let's get the divorce as you want. Cindy immediately replied, okay, then let's stick to the guarantee letter for compensation. Sue pointed out, I spent more than $750,000 on you, right? But Cindy insisted that not a single penny could be less. She threatened to expose legal and tax issues related to WeFone, mentioning her uncle's position in the Public Security Bureau. The WeFone product, used for international long-distance calls, is legal in Western countries, but doesn't have the necessary licenses in China. Sue was previously involved in the VPN business, which was later shut down. Sue's brother explained in an interview that the apartment was bought by Sue before the marriage, making it premarital property. So if they divorced, Cindy wouldn't get a share. That's why she insisted that Sue sell it and buy a new one, making it community property acquired after the marriage. On July 7th, Cindy began threatening Sue, claiming she would report him to the police the next day 
saying his tax evasion was a felony and could result in a life sentence. She argued that she should serve the country by exposing Sue as an unlawful person, predicting that Sue would soon become a prisoner due to the company's collapse. That day, Cindy and her mother went to Sue's apartment, met Sue in the elevator, and Cindy physically assaulted him again in the elevator. Terrified by Cindy's threats, Sue did not dare to return home and stayed in a hotel for a long time. By this time, both parties had decided to divorce, and the only remaining issue was the amount of compensation. On July 11th, Cindy posted an update on WeChat, congratulating her uncle on his promotion to senior police supervisor and highlighting recent happy events in the family. Under the threat, Sue gave in and texted Cindy, I don't want to get divorced. On July 13th, Cindy called Sue and suggested that they meet in person to discuss the matter. Sue did not want to meet, heard a man's voice on the phone saying, young man, our family has dozens of people in Beijing. You've made trouble for our Cindy. Pay up quickly or we'll close down your business. Confiscate all your income and come to your house tonight to arrest you. Sue was seriously frightened. He thought the company was in real trouble and that Cindy's influential uncle had the power to hurt him. Taking advantage of the situation, Cindy demanded not only the Hainan house, but also 10 million RMB, about $1.5 million in compensation. Sue protested, I don't have that kind of money. Why are you pushing me to the edge? Under Cindy's continued threats, the two signed a divorce agreement on July 16th. It stipulated a settlement of $1.5 million, with Sue paying $1 million upon signing and the remaining half million within two months of the divorce. The Hainan house would become Cindy's. Sue took two days, sold stocks, transferred money from the company account, and paid Cindy $1 million. He also transferred ownership of the Hainan house to Cindy. On July 18th, they got their divorce certificate. In that 41-day marriage, Sue spent over 13 million RMB, about $2 million on Cindy. After the divorce, Cindy kept pressuring Sue to pay the remaining amount. She warned that if he didn't pay, his company would be reported and shut down. He would be listed as a defaulter. His bank accounts would be frozen, making it impossible for him to take flights or high-speed trains, and the court would auction off his house. Sue claimed he really had no money left, and Cindy suggested options such as mortgaging the apartment or taking out a loan. At this point, Sue's family learned of the situation and advised him not to pay, urging him to report the matter to the police. Sue's sister came to Beijing to support him, and a lawyer he consulted recommended delaying payment under the pretext of fundraising. The lawyer also advised Sue to collect wire transfer receipts and chat records from their relationship. Sue begged Cindy to spare him, but Cindy claimed to have informed relatives with connections to the tax bureau. Cindy threatened to withdraw the report only after receiving full compensation. She continued to send screenshots of the report calls and Wii phone images to intimidate Sue. During this time, Cindy also had a man personally threaten Sue. On September 7th at 2 a.m., Sue posted an announcement on Wii phone claiming that his ex-wife had caused his death. Soon, Cindy sent furious messages to Sue. <laughs> Sue replied that it was just a test post and had already been deleted. At 5 a.m., Sue sent a message to his sister, who was sleeping at his apartment saying, I love you all but I really can't go on. I'm sorry to the family. He also told his sister that he had removed the password from his phone, which he had left in a corner. Sue then went to the rooftop of the apartment building and jumped. Before taking his own life, Sue wrote about his experiences with Cindy and shared everything online, including bank transfer receipts and chat records. This immediately went viral and people began to criticize Cindy with many calling and messaging her to insult her. 
Sue's family reported Cindy to the police for extortion. But since Sue's death was ruled a suicide, and the money given to Cindy was covered by an agreement, the police didn't pursue a criminal case. They advised Sue's family to file a civil lawsuit. Cindy's uncle clarified that Cindy was his niece, but they hadn't been in contact for many years, and he was a teacher at the Public Security University, not involved in law enforcement, and had no knowledge of Sue. After the incident, tax authorities also investigated WeFone Company, but found no tax-related issues. Six months later, in April 2018, Cindy posted on Weibo, claiming that her family had been extensively harassed and that all of their information had been exposed. She portrayed herself as the victim, saying that Sue often acted unhappily, neglected her, physically abused her multiple times, and had inappropriate relationships with his ex-girlfriend. She insisted that the Tesla was a gift from Sue and that he wrote the guarantee because of his guilt over the domestic violence. As for the $1.5 million settlement demand and threats, she said it was due to her anger at the time. During her relationship with Sue, Cindy's conversations with friends were revealed. In these messages, she expressed her current state, contemplating either divorce or finding a younger man to have fun with, claiming that she would spend the money. She expressed frustration with older men, mentioning a short IT guy, born in 1980, 160 cp tall, and stated her intention to divorce after accumulating more money, emphasizing that she couldn't spend her whole life with someone like Sue. On July 12, 2018, during the pre-trial meeting, Sue's family lawyer noticed that many conversations were missing from the chat records provided by Cindy. The court ordered Cindy to submit her phone, but she refused. In 2019, Netizens found Cindy's profile on the dating website again, where she had changed her residence to California, USA. This sparked further anger among netizens. In December 2020, Sue's family sued Cindy in a Beijing court. The court concluded the case more than two years later, on March 31, 2023. The court ruled that Cindy must return nearly $1.5 million and cars to Sue's family. In addition, the court ordered the cancellation of Cindy's personal ownership of two properties in Hainan and Beijing. In May 2023, Cindy claimed on Weibo that she had returned $1 million to Sue's family. She also instructed Sue's sister, urging her to pay the necessary taxes. Cindy analyzed the reasons for Sue's suicide, suggesting that Sue had been doing well for over a month after their divorce and questioning why he took his life when Sue's sister came to Beijing, implying additional pressure from her. Cindy specifically mentioned Sue's earlier post on Weibo. People who have the money to immigrate but choose not to are all scum. Why should I love such a country? After thugs take over the regime, they always claim to serve the people. She tried to tell netizens that Sue was unpatriotic, apparently to defend herself. She also said he was that scared because he didn't trust the government. Cindy has never apologized to Sue's family. In fact, before marrying Sue, Cindy was exposed for having three previous marriages, all of which were characterized by quick unions, followed by divorces using various excuses to secure substantial compensation. In her first marriage in 2011, to her college classmate Liu, Cindy received 200,000 RMB, about $30,000, and a Volkswagen car. The second marriage in 2012 was to Lee Tiejun, whom she met on a dating website. Cindy received 7.5 million RMB, about 1.12 million, and a BMW. In 2016, Cindy married a local businessman surnamed Wang, with Cindy insisted on a villa as a prerequisite for marriage, and she eventually acquired the villa after the marriage. Media confirmation shows that Cindy never worked for the alleged organization. Her college friends recall that she was secretive during their time at school and frequently took on part-time gigs as a freelance model. There are online allegations that Cindy may be involved in high-end companionship services, which may explain her Weibo posts 
showing travel to various locations. During her marriage to Sue, Cindy talked to various men about getting a room or going to her house for sex, asking some for $700 and some for $300. On June 9, 2023, Sue's brother shared that Cindy had been arrested and was currently being held in a detention center. Sue's siblings spent six years gathering evidence, and although the police did not file a case, they submitted the evidence to the procuratorate which eventually led to criminal charges against Cindy. In just five months, Sue went from a confident company founder to someone deeply distressed by life. When he met Cindy, he thought it was like a nerd meeting his dream girl. Cindy seemed to fulfill all his fantasies about women, but the sweetness lasted only a month before problems arose. Despite repeatedly noticing Cindy's abnormal behavior, he chose to continue the relationship, unwilling to cut his losses in time. Later, when he realized that he had been deceived, he couldn't forgive himself for his weakness and foolishness. He wanted to take revenge on Cindy with his own life, but it was really not worth it. Sue felt threatened by Cindy because his company meant everything to him. He had spent years building it, and it was the source of his confidence. Sue knew that the Wii phone business operated in a gray area in China and that there were some risks involved. He also knew that powerful government officials in China could seriously harm an entrepreneur if they wanted. Cindy is very skilled at presenting herself. When meeting men, she dresses modestly to avoid attracting attention and portrays herself as a gentle and accommodating girl next door. Her target selection is precise choosing men with little relationship experience and not so great images, but definitely financially capable. By rough calculations, her four marriages have netted her at least 30 million RMB, about $4.5 million, enough to live a wealthy life. What she didn't expect was that her greed and malice would drive Sue to the point of risking his life just to expose her. If this happened in your country, do you think Cindy would be punished and convicted, or would she escape legal consequences? What do you think about this case? Please share your opinion in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like it and subscribe to my channel.